as today is International Podcast Day, we're going to release four episodes on one day to celebrate that fact, all recorded at Leeds Digital Festival. This episode is with Crispin Reed, the CEO of the Coders Guild, and we're talking about the responsibility of organisations when entering somewhere like Leeds and creating jobs to make sure that there is a reliable pipeline of local talent. This is Tech Talks, your twice-weekly technology podcast celebrating International Podcast Day with myself, David Savage, powered by the Harvey Nash Group, where we talk to leaders from across the industry and bring you a bit of news. How are you, Akish? I'm very well, thank you, Dave. You all right? Are you enjoying your virtual trip to Leeds? Uh, I'm loving my virtual trip to Leeds. I think, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just loving hearing... The, the, the West Yorkshire accents as well, actually. Um, well, not not in this interview. No, He's not in this one. Not London. in this one. But, you know, <laughs> some of them, some of them, and not yours either. Um, but, yeah, I am enjoying it, mate. And no. um, listening to listen to how Leeds is, well, for me, um, becoming quite a bit of a staple location for technology, from the sounds of it, anyway. So, liking it. I think what's interesting is that it is, and I think I've said this on one of the other three interviews because four are going out today so mm. let's see people may have already listened to one of those um that i think there's this thing isn't there that if you live in leeds you've got bars clubs theaters etc but you've also got the dales and the moors on your doorstep mm. and that's quite a compelling that's quite compelling so it's a little bit of there's something in it for everyone right and yeah there's yeah I mean, where, where I live, that you don't have that. I mean, you've got bars, restaurants, but you don't have the Dales or the Moors. Um, no. You know, so I, I wish I had that. Um, it, it would have been good. Um, but, yeah, it's just it, – it's just I'm learning a lot more about the local kind of uh, investments. The, I guess also the biggest thing that I'm picking up, and I don't know if you picked this up because you're actually there, is just people are very passionate about their city and – the work that they're doing in the place. Do you, do you know what I mean? There's a real, yeah. like, there's an attachment that you can sense without them actually saying, like, we are very attached and very geared towards making something happen. So, Well, Crispin does. Yeah. As we, as, as we will let the audience find uh, out for themselves it. in this interview, he has gone full native. So I'm now sat down talking to Crispin uh, from the Coders Guild. I say from, founder and CEO. From from sounds a little bit unfair if you're the founder and CEO, but uh, how are you today? I, I'm good. I don't think that's unfair at all. I think that, you know, that I don't really think of the, uh, uh, I do think of the guild as a guild. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think like, it, you know, it's the, it's the, it's more than the sum of its parts. And, I'm, and I do feel like I am just a part. I'm not trying to be, it's not humble. This is just, like, that's the reality of the things that. It's a, it's a it's a group organisation and very much a, a group effort. Rightly or wrongly, whenever I hear the word guild, I cannot help but think of Terry Pratchett and Discworld. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, why not? Do you know? Like, it's that part of the reason of going of the of it being a guild is there. Were, I've been doing like a, 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 the apprenticeship stuff for 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 a long time, like as in before it was cool or before it was before it was a new thing. And then there's this move of like, oh, you know, technical apprenticeships. So, you know, there's a new, it's all new version. It's, you know, but really, for my mind, what we needed to be going back to is like that old idea of, of vocational training. In that, when you're a you 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 are an apprentice and you uh, you learn your trade from a from a master craftsman. Uh, sorry for the gender specific thing, but we're talking it's old world terms. Yeah, old world terms. Then you would. Uh, you'd complete your apprenticeship, you'd become a journeyman. Again, apologies, but you'd become a journeyman. You would go to different villages and towns and you would, you would work for different people. You'd, you'd um, do your masterpiece, you'd become a master, and then you were duty-bound to take on an apprentice yourself. And I think like when you know, talking about a guild is where the, why it became the, the, the you know, coders' guild is because that's kind of where I want us to get back to is that... Mm. We we train the new people coming in. We all do it, and then we do it as a as a community and as a uh, you know as a as a wider group of people. So I think I think we will almost certainly come back to the, to the guild in a bit more detail. But first of all, I, I am sat with you in a hotel with a 
little bit of background music. It's very strange after, it's still a bit strange after two years almost of being locked up to kind of get out and plunk the microphone on the table in front of people. But we are here because it is Leeds Digital Festival. Uh, at the time of recording, almost exactly halfway through. So what events have you been running during the course of the last week? Uh, so, I mean, like picking up on your point of it, like being like weird to get back to stuff, uh, we relaunched um, Leeds JS. So um, Luke Bernacossi, who, is, uh, who used to single-handedly basically run the Leeds JavaScript meetup group, moved to Scotland. And so me and uh, a few other people, Steve and, uh, and Rich and Colin, um, we've taken over the running of this. Like it was one of you know one of the most prolific I think meetup groups of the of the Leeds tech scene. And we just relaunched um, at, with a live meetup that we haven't had a live meetup since you know the beginning of the first lockdown, um, uh, and that was really exciting to be back and like tentatively sat in a room talking about JavaScript with uh, with people that lots of people that I haven't seen for for that long because you know if we're we didn't really do Zoom stuff with the the, the, DJS, the group. Didn't do a lot of Zoom, you know, the, the remote stuff. And yeah, it was it was really really exciting to be back, and it was, it was great. You know, we had a good turnout, we were nicely spaced out, but yeah, felt safe, felt fine. It's Went funny, isn't it? You kind of have this build up that it's gonna be weird, and then almost immediately it's not. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that it's interesting that you say a good turnout? Talking to people, I get the sense that maybe events don't have quite the numbers that they had, but the people who are there are super engaged, and it's actually really the, the, the sessions themselves are really good because the people who want to be there really want to be there. Yeah, I mean, so the, 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 let's take the example of the Leeds JS thing. I mean, that, that, was, that was already always a really engaged crowd, I think, you know, and the, and the fact that we're now. Um, so we're now going to be able to do streaming events at the same time as, as live. I think everyone was always was always pretty engaged with with that lot. Mm. I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that was much of a difference, really. But it's the the online things. I think are much easier for people to just sign up to and then and then not turn up to. I think if we were running like a live event. Um, Previously, we, we'd expect a thirty percent drop, but with uh, with an online event, especially a free one, you forty percent is good. I yeah. think yeah, forty fifty fifty percent is kind of normal. I think for for, some, for the, the actual numbers that turn up. So look, for, from your perspective, what has Leeds Digital Festival done for the tech community in the city? Because I've spoken to. People like Stuart Clark, the festival director, and, and other people who are heavily involved in, in, in organising it. But as someone who's running events, as someone who, who has the, the Coders Guild, what does it do for you? Um, I think, like, it, gives a, it gives an awareness to the, to the stuff that's going on in Leeds that, for people who wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Because like, see, most of the, the sorts of things that go on at Leeds Digital Festival um, certainly from, from, from like the perspective of the doers, the people who work in these communities and are part of these you know, communities, um, they happen all the time, you know, like they're every, every month. You know, there's so many regular tech meetups. In fact, that was, that was one of the reasons that I came to Leeds was because there was, there was such a good, um, a good bunch of communities that were putting on regular tech events. So what, what the festival does, I think, is, is like highlight that and enc also encourage people who wouldn't normally do events to have a bash and like try and do something mm -hmm. try and try and put something on and generally you know we'll get the um i don't think it's happened so much this year but um certainly in previous years we would have had like some sort of event special from from some of the tech meetup groups so look, two of the people that i've interviewed so far whilst i've been up here are proud Yorkshiremen. Yeah. And so when you kind of ask them, hey, look, why Leeds? I can't help but think, well, you've got a season ticket to Leeds United. You're not, you're not going to be holding back here. But 
You are not. You're an adopted Yorkshireman. You're from. You're That's from, right. But, the uh, but I, do, I do feel like I have gone full native. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, like I, I am well Yorkshire now. And I'm just like, oh, that London. <laughs> And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I haven't quite cut the apes since I do go down to London uh, quite a lot. But um, yeah, I do. I do really, really love it here. We had. Um, I chose Leeds. Actually, me and my wife chose Leeds. We moved up from London six, seven years ago now. Yeah. And we actually we used to do um, like little mini breaks for the for a weekend, and we and we went all over just looking for where we would move to. Out of London, where would where would be a good place? Like Bristol, Oxford, uh, Brighton, Sheffield. Was there any Glasgow. particular reason for wanting to get away from London? Uh, well, if, to be completely honest with you, that was like a bit, I'm from London. I thought I'd die there. Do you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but uh, my wife, she had a different opinion. Uh, so my <laughs> wife's from the north. She's from uh, she's from the Lake District. So she was very adamant that we weren't staying in London <laughs> after we got married and. Uh, uh, and she wanted to leave more than I wanted to stay. I think it's the fair enough. It's the that's a short version. So you did um, tour of the country. Yeah, and and really, like Leeds was such a good, like a good fit for for both of us. There were so many all the things we were um, as we were going round to places and saying like this is a plus and this is and this isn't, and we could kind of figure out what the things that we wanted to. So we wanted to be like close to um, outdoor space. So we wanted to be like near somewhere that is you know nice to walk in and be in uh, in nature so we've got you know you've got the dales and the north york moors and you've got the coasts um, and yeah. they are all really accessible from leeds we've also got like really good like easy access in so we so we live out um ilkley way so nice. yeah, yeah. so we've got really fast train right into right into leeds but then we've got the the um, the dales on the doorstep and got Ilkley Moor and, uh, and yep. whatnot. So we kind of were, were ticking all the boxes really. And for me, I was I was I was Ali wanted to say she does she works in um, public health and uh, and nutrition, so she wouldn't be close to a university that was focused on that. And uh, it's got good uh, nutrition and uh, and uh, elements of public health in their school. And uh, and also there's an airport. But for me, it was the, it was the tech scene. You know, like I, I'd been up to Leeds for a couple of conferences, and one of the things I really liked was the was the was the roots level of it. Like, but at the time in in my career, the, the sort of conferences that I was going to in London, they were they were you know there's a few meetups at London Web Standards. It's really good. It's, a, it's like a it's like a roots thing. But where I come to Leeds, you know, you the, um, at the at the time WordPress was was kind of. Was was a big thing, and the and the Leeds WordPress group was was massive, and were and you know the regular meetups all run by themselves. It's a community run thing, and there were so many other things as well. So we you know other you know things about you know JavaScript, which at the time was kind of an emerging like an emerging the emerging dominance. So it's not like it was an emerging as a uh, as a particular tech, um, and yeah, and, and I think that and that's been really. Um, really good since I moved here you know because I did move here to, to know a soul but it was but it was really easy to find like-minded people and uh, and you know build a network and yeah. meet people who were interested in doing stuff rather than just being at work so let's let's switch back to the guild for a second I don't want to make the assumption that apprentices means young people but in terms of the demographic of, of of the guild itself what are we looking at in terms of age demographic uh, i mean um so just looking at the apprenticeships which go so apprenticeships is like it's kind of like it's it's fundamental to what we're trying to achieve but um we actually work like in a much wider spectrum and like yeah. it, you know from uh, we did some boot camps with the dfe as a pilot thing earlier this year as a way to get people um, ready to start apprenticeships, which is which is actually a thing that we've been doing uh, for free for, <laughs> for a long time, but now we've, we've got funding to do it, so we could do a, a better job of it. And, um, and and then also, even like before that, like having people, especially from underrepresented groups, which is you know another part of the um, of the social mission, is to is to 
validate them and give them um, a route into the career and, and like dismantle barriers and stuff. Then on the other side of the apprenticeships, we've got like the CPD of, of moving the whole, um, progressing the whole workforce. Because if we, you know, if no apprenticeships is the, kind of the key thing that, that I really want to take hold. But in order to do that, we've got we've got all that work beforehand to make that bit work, and then all the work after it as well. We want to be, you know, people come out of an apprenticeship, and I want to kind of install in them that 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 you're going to get better and better, and then you're going to take apprentices on, and it's. Yeah. And it's great when we see um, previous apprentices who are now mentoring new, you know, new grads coming through. Um, so I've strayed from the question. <laughs> no, not but at like, all. In terms of the demographic, um, as tend actually to be, you think, it, yeah, I think less so now, but certainly um, in the last few years, you, you know, there's been a, there's been the assumption that apprentices are young didn't go to college um you know it's like the like yts replacement sort of thing and and that's really not true especially for us like lots of the people who come into apprenticeships are people who have um chosen not to go to uni and chosen a, a, a vocational path or there are people who a lot a lot of career changes as well so we get people who have started a career in um I don't know, in, in, in law or, um, or, or you know, any other field, and then they've decided to switch to coding and then come and do an apprenticeship as a, as a route in. So there's, there's been a huge amount of job creation in Leeds in the technology market over the last few years, and that's prior to, to the pandemic. So in terms of Skybet, um, the Channel 4 announcement was before the pandemic, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, so, yeah just before, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's been some real kind of success stories in the region prior to that happening. And I suppose that would have given people confidence to switch careers or to, to say, no, I can, I can enter this because there's, there's opportunities and hopefully tapping into those underrepresented groups as well. How has the, how has the pandemic changed the dynamic? Because is it, is it that those companies are now thinking, well, it's not so critical that the talent's on our doorstep or are the talent locally going, it's not so critical that I work for these companies at least because I could work in Manchester if I only need to be there a day or two a week. Yeah, I think I think that's really interesting. I think that we we'll see how that develops because I've heard like I've heard quite a few things of like companies trying to get back to the way it was and trying to get back to being in the office. But I'm imagining that uh, I think you're quite right. Your your location does matter less, and people and businesses are more um, more adaptable and they're more um, ready to let people work from home three days a week and just come in for a couple of days I mean, I, one thing I um, one thing I would like, the whole the idea that um, Sky and Channel 4 came and created loads of jobs I mean the thing is, is that the, if you come and create loads of jobs you only really like, create jobs if those people don't just move from from other places because you're paying them more. Right. You know I mean? So like the you know the you know the celebration that a big company comes to Leeds, big tech company comes to Leeds, and that's a job creation. They're not bringing those people with them. You know, they're not like attracting those people from the wider area to come and then live in Leeds and they're, they're no, but I suppose indirectly there may then be more of an appetite for investment in the area, more startups, yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I completely support that. But I think it's like a, it's a longer term thing, though, isn't it? Mm. And I would say that you know, there's, um, there's maybe uh, it's just popped in my head. So here it comes straight out of my mouth. <laughs> I think that you know, there, there ought to, there probably should be more of a responsibility for if you are a big company coming to, um, and you need, two hundred developers, and you come to somewhere the size of Leeds, you realise what that what that impact is going to be and there's maybe there should be more thought about what goes into um work in cultivating that talent pipeline and i think like one of the things that that, that i don't know i may lead specific but but definitely the the businesses that we talk to and the employers that are in yorkshire tend to be 
much more keen on securing that local talent pipeline, much more receptive to the idea of that's the thing that we're doing with the apprenticeships is like there's an enormous amount of people. If you look at like the you know the um, the, the amount of people who could commute into Leeds and who could be a developer, a tester, a data analyst, but maybe are excluded from that career because they didn't do science EA levels. Or, you know, in their mind, they're excluded from that career because they yeah. didn't do computer science and they don't do this. But if they're problem solvers and they, um, they understand patterns uh, or, or they're curious and they like breaking stuff, you know, the, 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 the actual indicators of how good someone's going to be as a developer tester as an analyst that they they're, they're kind of different to the things that 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 we are we're marked on in school like the whole education system is kind of um really focused on what can be marked rather than than, than what's useful yeah. about a person or what's what's what their skills and aptitudes are it's when i was having a conversation with a company only a few weeks ago, we talked about the fact that the CV's been around since the 1600s and therefore kind of primes us to measure proxies of talent, yeah. which actually aren't particularly helpful. We, we, we basically have a no CV rule. We will, we, will let, we will let employers ask for CVs after they have rounded down their candidates to, to a few, then we say, if they're desperate for it. But we try and encourage them against it because what's the point? Mm. What, what, what does that piece of paper give you? Right. So look, it kind of neatly brings us to one more question that I mm -hmm. wanted to ask, which I think is quite, I think it's quite relevant, um, especially now, post pandemic and people beginning to reconnect and, and, and stuff. Well, not post pandemic, that's the wrong phrase entirely, but post post lockdown. Um, how do you go and find the communities that you're talking about? You know, it's absolutely brilliant that it's it's more of a let's have a look at people's potential, but it's still it's one thing saying that. It's another thing reaching them and making sure that they hear that message and that you get them to be yeah, part of your programs. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, uh, you know, I think that's a that's a big deal. In that, it's really easy for someone to, you know, for a company to have an initiative to to be more diverse in their recruitment. But it's it's a it's a big job, and it isn't just you know. It's not about positive discrimination. It's a, it's a much longer, more difficult piece of work. Inclusion is, you know, it, it's really, it's a very complex thing and it's multi-layered and it needs commitment and, uh, and, and we need to do a lot. And a lot of it is, um, I think what we've found is all the, we've tried loads and loads of different things over the years, but it's, um, it's referral and personal outreach is, gets the best results and you know yeah you can um you can weight job adverts in favor of particular demographic groups and that's one thing that we've done with with our adverts is that you know based on the um statistics that we have around the the particular groups that are in a geographical area we can basically work out to even the field, this is how much we should spend on ads for women versus men, or for you know different age groups and uh, and all sorts of demographics. You know we can we can work out how to basically make that level, but that's kind of, that's only like a, that's a small part of it. Yeah. There, there's so much more around you know the, the longer term work that we all need to do. You know from as a, you know as I was saying before, it's like it starts way 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 earlier than, than you would think, you know, right when the children are really young about mm -hmm. like validating people's path into, uh, into these sorts of careers. And again, at the other side, it's about, you know, it's about constructing um, the right sort of environments for people to thrive in. Yeah. And incidentally, I think that's the thing that the, you know, the pandemic has forced us into um, particularly well, the, the, the way of being productive and able to be a parent and like <laughs> yeah. uh, and like it does, you know kids on zoom calls you know that's normal now and um but to be like to be honest most of um 
most of the staff at the Coders Guild are actually parents as well. So like kids on Zoom calls has been like normal for us for the, you know, even before the apocalypse. But um, yeah, the pushing people into that, uh, you know, more into that accepted uh, the idea of oh we had to do this because the whole country was put into this situation whereby we've got to make this work. So this is what we'll do. And yes, okay, you you work from home and. Yeah, I understand that you're not going to be, you're not available for that meeting at half past three because you've got to do the school run today. And that, that, that forced acceptance, I think, is really, really positive in that we're able to thrive and able to create conditions. And, and hopefully, because everybody has been forced to be put into that position themselves, it gives them empathy. And hopefully it will give them the opportunity to be more reflective about what else they could do to make the working environment more appealing, more um, more supportive, or just more um, more flexible, better for, for other people to thrive in. So I'm thinking uh, immediately about neurodiverse individuals yeah. and how uh, and how people can make work the workplace a better place for them. So I'm hope yeah I'm hopeful that um, as one of the good things that comes out of. Uh, you know, the past eighteen months, and nobody really wants to talk about. But you know, there's good, there's good, there's of definitely course. good things that can come out of it. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm hopeful. But Crispin, thank you very much for your time. It's it's uh, a pleasure. I know it's busy, but it's also Friday afternoon, which is possibly not a time to have a microphone plonked in front of you. Uh, so I appreciate your time, and fingers crossed, the second week of of the of the festival goes well. Great. Oh, can I can I plug some of our events? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, we uh, it, we had a, an event for um, being more environmentally conscious as uh, as a tech user and as a tech business. Yeah. Um, that's been and gone, but we do have the the video and the and the resources for that. So, Where or where's the website? Uh, so if you if you go to thecodersguild.org.uk, you can find that and find this out. Um, we've got an event. Um, that by the time the podcast comes out, actually, it's on Thursday, so it might, we might be on the website as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but one that will still be going on. We're running a hack for um, to improve LGBTQ plus inclusion in Leeds. So, uh, and the closing date to enter is the date that this podcast goes out. So you still do have a chance to enter. Is It'll there... go out at five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning on yeah, the thirtieth. Yeah. On the thirtieth. Oh right. So you got. So if you if you listen to this at five a.m., you got uh, you've got twelve hours. There we go. The competition closes, so we're accepting entries. Um, we're calling it a hack because it's kind of we're running on the same principles as a as a hackathon would be for if we were, you know, smashing out some code over a few days. But actually, it's for um, any creative, any uh, organizer, visionary, any any doers at all, anything you can think of that um, that could make Leeds more inclusive for. Uh, our LGBTQ plus communities. I'll have to make sure that our socials talk about that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at least. Brilliant, thanks. Oh, that has a different address. That's lgbtqhack.com. Email that to me and I'll make sure that's in socials. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I think it's a really interesting comment that education needs to focus um, on what's useful and not just what can be marked. I think that's mm. a fair accusation, right? Yeah, I think so. And it's it's an age old um, argument that, well, not argument, but it's a discussion that people have around, you know, is is this kind of education going to be useful, or is this just a kind of tick box exercise and something that I'm not really going to use at, you know, some point down the line or or whatever, and that's kind of going all the way back to schools and colleges and that sort of thing. So, I'm I'm very much. I, I guess um, I'm very much of the, the the kind of thought that you know when when they what cold, the the coders guild team are working towards and and kind of making that kind of valuable tech education piece I think it's is it's very very decent I think um, and I think that the, what they're aiming to do and kind of bring in um, I think it's really really great. And he, he seems quite passionate as well. Like, I don't know how it came across because you sat across the table from him, but he seemed very passionate, um, which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, he is. I think he's very proud of what they do. Mm. I mean, I, I love the fact, I mean, you talk about passion there. He talks about the fact that companies should have more responsibility, um, you know, the, the impacts that they have in coming to Leeds, you know, more work to cultivate talent pipelines locally. 
And that really, you did get a sense that that was something that it's not just a company line. It's something that he deeply cares about. Mm. And, and, and they're going far, I guess they're going far deeper than what a normal company say would, would be responsible for. And, and it seems like they're actually taking a lot more on their plate and, you know, in, in a way kind of almost being a lot more responsible and saying, we want to help change, you know, the, the kind of, um, the headlines or we want to change the status quo for this and, and, and bring about real change um, when it comes to leads and people and, and kind of, you know, about driving like equality and inclusivity. There's a thing on their website, um, which, you know, I thought was a great phase uh, phrase really where it says um, it talks about kind of Crispian and his kind of experience as a developer, but then he finishes it off with, bringing together a community of like-minded people who are passionate about driving diversity, equality, and inclusivity in tech. And I thought, do you know what? That's, that's pretty spot on and you can definitely sense that. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and look, as he, as he says, you know, when this is going out, I put it on, so I put this out on Twitter yesterday um, at, at the time of this going out. So this will be going out Thursday the 30th, depending on when you're listening to it up until five o'clock this afternoon, if it is the 30th still, um, they're running an LGBTQ plus hack. So if you go to um, LGBTQ plus hack and, and put coders guild into Google, it will come up with the site. And yeah, absolutely. That kind of driving those initiatives um, for, you know, for minority groups, for, you know, for, for, for the LGBTQ mm. IA plus community. Mm absolutely endorses what you're saying yeah 100 percent. and i think it's great honestly like um the the, the name when i saw coders guild i was like Whoa, what is it and i think the start of the interview it's a bit like you know there's a bit of kind of back and forth about it but i think it's what they're doing and the commitment uh yeah i, I, I think it's, it's very very good um and yeah well kind of academy and whatever else you're creating kind of yeah around. yeah and, and but like a guild when he's talking about a master you know it, it does have that much more kind of community family you know i i will learn and then i will give back kind mm. of like a union looks after its own folk a guild is like that but even more so mm. and I, I i don't know if they, they they were meant to kind of have a play on words but like guild for me it was it seems very like old school very like a privileged type yeah. of you know kind of place where you've got to be a certain so-and-so and that's how you get in and be involved and i think no no but to me the word guild right makes me think All right, okay. that but then the fact that they've come in and done the complete opposite i don't know like for me i was like oh actually this is quite a good name do you know what i mean like yeah no a guild to me is kind of is that community of, of working yeah. folk specialist skilled trades people mm. learning and, and passing on their knowledge but um yeah, no, the other thing that he mentions, look, just, just on that front of, of kind of organizations coming into Leeds, having to have more responsibility, he talks about the enormous amount of people who could commute to Leeds, who are curious, um, look for patterns and want to break stuff. And I just thought, you know, talking to an ex-recruiter and you being a recruiter, you know, that's the potential that we're looking for. Do you like to break stuff? Do you like... You know, are you curious? Can you spot patterns? God, wouldn't our jobs be more interesting if we were asking people stuff like that? <laughs> what have you broken in a creative what, way recently? Do you like to cause destruction? Uh, do you go away from the norm? Uh, no, I know C sharp. No, 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 no. What are you broken? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that could be more interesting. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Like, just great questions, just to get to know people away from things, right? Um, and yeah. yeah, being a recruiter, I'd, I'd love to ask those sort of questions or be able to go to a client and say, um, this guy, Tommy, he's broken a load of shit in the past um, and he'll come in and break loads more. So hire him and for them. But to he is excellent. Yeah. Look at that potential. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Oh God, if only. Well, look, I mean, we're making a joke of it, right? But one of the other interviews uh, out today is with a company called Tread. They've been looking for front end engineers, front end engineers rather for six months and they're hitting their head against a brick wall because they're using the same standard um, recruitment techniques and everyone else is doing the same and they're getting priced out of the market. And, you know, my, my comment to them was have a think about kind of potential rather than experience and Crispin kind of reinforcing that by saying how they've thrown the CV out and, and that they've got a slightly different approach too. And, and it seems to be going well. Mm. We have got 
three other offerings for you today. So not only can you listen to Crispin talking about the Coders Guild, you can also listen to Susie Bell from Head Partnership. You can listen to Johnny from Fleek Marketing. And uh, as I alluded to there, you can listen to Will Smith from Tread. So you've got lots of listening to do today, binge style, and that's because it is International Podcast Day. Yeah, Do have a check out of those. They're all from Leeds Digital. And if you're listening to one of the others, well, me and Akeesh are probably chatting absolute gibberish on that one too. But we... Um, we- you know, are probably proving to be good, uh, good assistance on uh, or in a queue for someone who's listening to this for some petrol or some fuel. So, if you are in one of those, if that crisis is still ongoing, <laughs> yeah, it probably will be. Um, but if you are queued up, you know, plug and play and uh, listen to us. And um, yeah, Leeds Festival, Leeds Digital Festival. I don't care. Give you the satisfaction